You're watching Giants Now by Chat Sports. I'm your host, Marshall Green. NFL free agency is about a week away from being kicked off, and free agency rumors surrounding the Giants are starting to heat up. Pat Leonard, a beat reporter for Big Blue, said that Jonah Jackson and Daniil Hunter are among the top-tier free agents that the New York Giants are going to pursue in NFL free agency. We're going to break down both of these players in today's show. I'll tell you if I would sign either of these guys, and we'll decide what the Giants need to do in free agency to get back to competing in the NFC East. But first, I need you guys to follow me on my brand new Instagram. I'm starting to put free, informative, entertaining content over there every single day. And I want you guys to take part of it. So give me a follow at Marshall Green underscore. And the first 25 people that follow me from today's video, I'm going to give you a shout out on Monday's live stream here on the channel. Free agency kicks off, not this Monday, not, a, not tomorrow, but a week from tomorrow, and the New York Giants are expected to have roughly about $38 million in cap space. So Joe Shane is gonna have really enough money and enough ammunition to go and help and build this roster. And they need to add talent. And adding a guy like Daniil Hunter in NFL free agency would be a home run move for Big Blue. The Giants need to get back to putting pressure on opposing quarterbacks, and there's not many better in the league than Hunter at doing that. And he's been one of the best edge rushers in this league for quite some time. I've always wished and hoped that Hunter would one day be a member of the New York Giants. He's gone through a couple of contracts, it's kind of situations with the Minnesota Vikings. He's been franchise tag before, they've got him an extension before, but now he's going to be a free agent, and does, it does not sound like he is going to be going back to the Vikings this past year for Minnesota. He was really good. And what you kind of think about with Hunter is just the freak of nature and the reckless style of play and just the game-wrecking ability that he has. 83 tackles this past year in all 17 games. 23 tackles for loss. He makes a lot of plays near or at the line of scrimmage. 16 and a half sacks last year. One of the best numbers in the NFL. Four forced fumbles. 22 QB hits. Had 80 total pressures according to Pro Football Focus. And he's been doing it at this type of level throughout his NFL career. If there was one kind of red flag when it comes to the deal hunter as a prospect and as a guy you want to invest in in the long term it's the injury history you see he did not play in that 2020 season due to a neck injury came back in 2021 got off to a good start but then he had a pec injury that knocked him out the rest of the way but since then he has had perfect participation he has not missed a game in the last 34 games the guy almost has 30 sacks he gets after the quarterback another thing that I really like about him is the ability to set the edge as a run stopper his pro football focus grade this past year does not directly reflect that only graded him out at a 51.7 but maybe the new defense with Brian Flores kind of affected that but he is a five tool pass rusher he can set the edge he can get after the quarterback and he makes play near put makes plays near or at the line of scrimmage in the run game and in the pass game you see that via his pro football focus grades throughout his entire career it's not going to be cheap though if you're going to want to bring in a guy like this who many think is going to be the best free agent pass rusher to hit the market. Pro Football Focus thinks it would cost three years at $21.67 million of average annual value. That would make him the 10th highest paid edge rusher in this league. $40 million guaranteed, $65 million total. So three years, $65 million total with 40, 40 guaranteed. And if I'm going to spend big money on any position this offseason, Edge rusher is at the top of that list. When you're able to affect a game from inside the trenches on the defensive side of the ball and make life hell for the opposing quarterbacks, you're going to be one of the best defenses in the NFL. And to be kind of blunt, the Giants have not been able to do that for a while, and they have some of the worst edge rushers in this league. I like Kayvon Thibodeau. I think he's going to be a really good player in this league for a really long time. But he can't right now be your best edge rusher. And having a guy like Hunter come over, play with Thibodeau, who I think Thibodeau kind of emulates a little bit of a younger version of Hunter, teach him some tricks of the trade, be a veteran that he can lean on and help him grow in this league. I think Ojolari has talent, but availability, always a question with him. Boogie Basham may not be on this team, and Ryder Anderson is not an NFL quality player at this point. So maybe you do go and give Daniil Hunter a bag, or maybe you look at some of these other top guys. Josh Allen and Brian Burns are both are expected to be franchise tag. Maybe you turn your attention to Bryce Huff if Hunter is out of your price range. Maybe a younger guy like Chase Young or Jonathan Greenyard. Not really all that interested in Clowney or Zadarius Smith. 
I always have been a fan, though, of Leonard Floyd, and I think him on a cheap one-year deal could make some sense if you strike out on some of the top guys. What do you think, though? If you were Joe Shane, if you were general manager of the New York Giants, would you sign Daniel Hunter? Would you pay him that three years, $60 million-plus contract? Type Y for yes, type N for no. I would pay Daniel Hunter in a, heart, in a heartbeat. I think Hunter is my number one defensive free agent target. The only guy that I would probably have him over him when it comes to overall free agent targets is Mike Nguyenu of the New England Patriots. But they have a lot of cap space, and they've gone out on record saying he is a fundamental piece in our rebuild going forward. So it's not even clear if he's going to be able to hit free agency. And I think the Giants may have a little bit of an inside track on Hunter. Andre Patterson used to be the assistant head coach and D-line coach for the Minnesota Vikings. He was supposedly a big part in why Hunter was drafted by the Vikings coming out of LSU. They suppose we have a really strong relationship, helped him get to the top of the NFL as one of the best D-linemen. And as we all know, still Dre, Andre Patterson, is the D-line coach for the Giants. And I'm sure that Daniel Hunter would like to come play for him in the greatest city in the world. If it does happen, we're going to be breaking it down on this channel. So subscribe and turn your notifications on. We're going to be live on Monday, day one of NFL free agency, breaking everything down that happens across the NFL. So subscribe and turn your notifications on because now is the time of year where moves can happen at 1 a.m., 5 a.m., 11 a.m., 2 p.m., 5 p.m. It doesn't matter. The news cycle does not stop and you don't want to be the person out of the loop, so subscribe and turn your notifications on. From Daniil Hunter to Jonah Jackson, another player that Pat Leonard, beat reporter for the New York Giants, said is at the top of their list when it comes to free agents. Uh, Jonah Jackson is an interior offensive lineman, last played for the Detroit Lions, and I think Jonah Jackson is a solid player. I think he's a starting level caliber player in this league, but he's nothing special, and I would personally go after bigger Fish. If I'm Joe Shane, I know how important it is to fortify the offensive line. It's been my biggest task since becoming the general manager of this team, and it's offseason number three, and I'm still trying to get it done. That's why I would go and spend bigger money on a better player. Joan is a really good guy, player overall, though. When you look at some pro football focused numbers, he was graded out as the 34th overall guard this past year, 27th in 2022, and 24th in 2021. When you talk about PFF war, very similar to the baseball stat war, he was in the middle of the pack as well. So good player, not a great player. And you kind of see that reflected in his pro football focus grades as well. Not graded above 63 in any department this year. Last year, he was a little bit better, grading out as a 70 overall run blocker and 76 the prior year. And he's a much better run blocker than pass blocker. I think he does a good job of getting on to the second level of defenses and latching onto linebackers and creating running lanes. But I also think that he really struggles as a pass blocker. And a guy that I'm going to pay big money potentially to play next to Evan Neal, I want him to be an all-world pass blocker because we know the struggles and limitations that Evan Neal has showed early on in his NFL career. The contract projection for Jonah Jackson Three years at $10.25 million of average annual value. That comes out to $16.7 million guaranteed, according to Pro Football Focus, and $30.75 million, $30 million total. Excuse me. So three years, $30 million with 16 guaranteed. That would make him the 16th highest paid guard in the NFL. And that's about what he is. He's a middle-of-the-pack player, not great. Not bad. He's your average offensive lineman at that right guard spot. And for me, I want to go big. And in my life, I believe you go big or you go home. And especially when you allowed the second most sacks in NFL history last year at 85, your offensive line is in shambles. You need to go fix that. And the way the Giants could do that with the type of cap space they have is by going out and signing a guy like Kevin Dotson or a guy like Robert Hunt. Those are my top two guard free agent targets. And according to PFF, they're the best two, and they're projected to get about $17 million per year of average annual value. So it'll cost you a little more cheddar, but I think you'll see the results pay, on, uh, pay off as time goes on. I want someone playing alongside Evan Neal at that right guard spot who has top-end talent. And Robert Hunt has shown that over the past couple of years. And Kevin Dotson, his first year in L.A., he showed he could be a top-notch starting right guard. The Giants just could do better than Jonah Jackson. I'm not going to be upset if they sign him. I think it'd be a good signing. At the value it's at, 
I like that. Still 27 years old, was a third round pick, I believe, in the 2020 NFL draft, and I think he can continue to get better as a player. But the need, I think, requires someone better at that position. Maybe it's just because I'm I'm just I'm tired of seeing bad offensive line play. It'd be a good signing, not a great signing, and I want to see a great signing at that right guard spot. But you may not be able to pay big time money to an edge rusher and an offensive lineman. So I want you to pick it. Who, what position? Would you rather allocate more free agency dollars to? Is it an edge rusher, type ER, or if you want to beef up beef up the trenches on the offensive side and pay an offensive lineman, type OL. Let me know what you think. And make sure you guys are following me over on Instagram. Trying to get this puppy humming, and I need your help. So give me a follow, and if you're one of the first 25 to do so, I'm going to give you a shout-out on tomorrow's live stream. Until then, let's go Big Blue and hit that thumbs-up icon on your way out.